Hi, it's Dwyer, January 12th, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk betting strategy here. This isn't a pick video. This is really just a make a profit video, right? Let's talk about the NFL playoffs. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many people get confused playing futures. Let's say you have a futures bet on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, now understand the odds involved here. The current odds on the Jaguars to win the Super Bowl are better than 47 to 1. Right? Just understand that if you had that futures bet, and I did not recommend it here online, but if you have it, you need to start cashing it in right now. And by that I mean the line is close in their playoff game. I believe they're playing the Los Angeles Chargers, right? Who, by the way, are 23 to 1. What you want to do in a situation like that, let's say you bet $10, $10 on the Jacksonville Jaguars to win 10 times 47, that would be $470. Well, just understand, folks, if you hedge the play right here, in other words, if you think to yourself, well, if I were to win this bet, I would have expected winnings of greater than $470. Well, right here, you're out of pocket $10. I believe you should bet at least $10. It's a relatively even line. You should bet at least $10 on the Los Angeles Chargers. Right? The reason is simple. If you lose this game, and if the Jags are no longer viable, and you win $10 on the other side of the play, then you're out of pocket $0. Well, let's think this through a little bit more. Why would I stop at betting $10 on their opponent, the Chargers? Wouldn't I want to bet $20 on the Chargers? This way, I have $10 on the Jags. If the Jags win, guess what? I still have expected winnings of, not really expected winnings, but possible winnings, we'll call it, of greater than $470, right? It's a plus 4,777, right, on the Jags right now. So understand, the Jags win this game, that bet's still alive. I can hedge further the next round, and the next round I would hedge enough where I would recoup not just the 10 bucks I placed on the Jags, but the money I lost on the Chargers. Right? You understand that. And if the Jags were to win in the second round of the playoffs, then you have the pleasant problem of having a team that much closer to the Super Bowl in the third round of the playoffs. And you could hedge big there. But understand, if the roof caves in, let's say I put 20 bucks on the Chargers. Why? Because I have 10 bucks already on the Jags at greater than 47 to 1 odds. Well, if I put 20 bucks on the Chargers and the Chargers win the game, then guess what, folks? Out of the entire exercise, I've made 10 bucks. Right? I lose the 10 on the Charger future. Right? Assuming an even money line, and you're getting better than even money on the Chargers this weekend. Assuming an even money line just for illustrative purposes here to make this math easy. If I bet 20 bucks on the Chargers and I win 20 back, that even with the $10 loss I have on the Jags, I've made 10 bucks. 
In other words, you don't have to be right here. I can think the Jags are going to win the game. The bets are predetermined for me because I'm looking at the possible winnings and I'm hedging. So at the end of the game, let's say you're 47 to 1 play to win it all loses. You can say, man, I'll be doggone. It's too bad they lost. I was enjoying having money on such a long shot. And you can say that while you're cashing your $20 ticket on the opponent and netting a profit. Now figure out the math. You want to consider that for all of these teams, right? You want to say, well, how much do I stand to win with my long-term bet on, let's say, the Dallas Cowboys, right, folks? The Cowboys are going off at better than 13 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Right, so let's say you're nervous about that Tampa Bay game. Why? Because it's Tom Brady. <laughs> it's the wrong opponent, the wrong time of year. It's Tom Brady in the playoffs. Then you look at Tom Brady's track record against the Cowboys. It's a very good one. Now, I happen to think the Cowboys come out of the NFC. But just understand, Tampa right now at home is a two-and-a-half-point dog. You're getting better than even money on the Tampa side of the play. If you bet the Cowboys and if you got the current 13 to 1 odds, right? There are plus 1378. It's actually better than 13 to 1. Let's say you got 13 to 1. Well, at this point, let's say you had bet 10 bucks on the Cowboys. You're looking at winning 130 bucks if they win the Super Bowl. Right, so here you could say, you know what? Since I bet 10 bucks on the Cowboys and since I'm getting better than even money on Tampa, if I'm nervous about the Cowboys on the road, if I'm nervous about Dak's interceptions, if I'm nervous about last week's game, which the Cowboys lost, then I can bet the 10 bucks that I have on the Cowboy future on Tampa, right? If the Cowboys get by Tampa, great. Then you're by Tom Brady. And understand, next week, you can then, if you're nervous about the Cowboys, if you don't believe the Cowboys can win the Super Bowl and you just have bet on them to have the position, you can hedge them further. So if the Cowboys cash out of the playoffs, you can make a profit, right? Just understand how outrageous the odds are, folks. The Cowboys won a double-digit number of games this year, and you're getting them at slightly better than 13 to 1 right here. Let's talk about another betting strategy, and I know this sounds wonkish. It shouldn't. So you're sitting there and you have the Jaguars at better than 47 to 1, right? Again, they're 4777 right now. They're 47.77 to 1 to get technical. Let's say you have them at 47 to 1. And you're thinking, man, I want to hedge this play, right? Would it shock you to know that you're getting their opponent, the Los Angeles Chargers, at greater than 23 to 1. Think about that. So, let's say you're nervous on the game, right? The Jags, this version of the Jags, don't really have a lot of playoff experience, right? Let's just say their division wasn't the strongest division in the league. They haven't been playing tough teams. Right, while the NFC East has been playing each other, right? Philly, two games against the Cowboys. The Cowboys and Philly, two games against the Giants. All three teams in the playoffs. You understand the Jags division doesn't compare. Right? Well, understand, you guarantee yourself.
the winner of that game. Why even wait till the game? You guarantee yourself the winner of that game at long odds by just putting money on their opponent. In other words, you're looking at the Jags, you're saying, wow, 47 to 1, I like that. That's a lot to hedge, right? That's how you want to view these bets. Understand, the Jags, if you're a hedger, have already delivered simply by making the playoffs. So now you get a gift from the gambling gods. They tell you that the Los Angeles Chargers are a greater than 23 to 1. You don't even have to be smart. You you can pick up the 23 to 1 now on a futures. Chargers to win the Super Bowl, right? Or if you want to cut it down, Chargers to win the AFC, right? Just so you get the long odds and you cash before the Super Bowl even takes place. So understand what that means. It means if you have 10 bucks on the Jags, you can put 10 bucks on the Chargers. You're guaranteed the winner of the game. With a lot to hedge in the next round of the playoffs. Right? Just think it through. So, you want to start cashing here. If you're sitting on a 47 to 1 ticket with the Jags, please don't be the casual gambler who does nothing with it and just says, hey, I'm going to let this ride. Why would you when you could hedge? And I'm talking about hedging cheaply, right? The line in their Jag Charger game is practically even. So you could get the Chargers at a reasonable rate of return and hedge easily. Right? So as you watch the games, you can sit back and you can exhale a little bit. And you can say, man, I'll be doggone. <laughs> the team I thought was going to win was not going to win. And you would still be alive in the next round of the playoffs with long odds. Let me close with this. You and I don't believe that the Vikings are going to win the Super Bowl. Right? I don't believe they're going to win the Super Bowl. But would it shock you to know that the Vikings, who play at home, right? Think about it. They're the two seed in the... NFC, the two seed, they play at home. Would it shock you to know that right now, if you look up the odds for them to win the Super Bowl, you're getting better than 31 to 1. It's a plus 3150. It's 31 and a half to 1 for the Vikings to win the Super Bowl. Just have that soak in, and they're playing at home. What could possibly make this better? How about the fact that the team they are playing, the New York Giants, and I don't expect the Giants to win the Super Bowl, but the New York Giants are going off, folks, at better than 55 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. Right? Think about it. They're in the playoffs. They're playing a team that statistically isn't that dominant. Right? You know, a gambler could show up. You could be a clueless gambler. A gambler could show up and could think to himself, look, all I'm looking for is leverage in the next round of the playoffs. Let's say you have heavy money on one of these higher ranked teams. Right? The Eagles, the one seed in the NFC, right? Let's say you have heavy money and you want to make sure that you're covered somewhat, right? Let's say I have $300 on the Eagles, right? For me, that's heavy money, <laughs> right? Let's have 300 bucks on the Eagles. And I, 
I'm not going to tell you what I actually have. We'll just say 300 bucks on the Eagles. And let's say I want to cover that. You realize that if the Eagles were to face the Vikings, if the one were to face the two in the NFC Championship game, a $10 bet, a $10 bet on the Vikings who are going off at greater than 30 to 1, right, would mean that I'm still alive after that game. Because... If the Vikings beat the Eagles, right? Well, guess what? 10 times 30 is 300, right? I would have the winner of the game, and I would still have a chance to win 300 if the Vikings delivered in the Super Bowl. Well, here, I don't have to view the Viking-Giant game as even a game with a plausible Super Bowl winner. All I have to do is know that they're playing each other and I'm looking for leverage. Right? So understand, I'm literally the man off the street. I walk in, I say, come on, the winner of this game's not going to win the Super Bowl. Then I think to myself, well, well, wait a moment. There has to be a winner of this game, right? These are the playoffs. These games don't end in ties. Then I look at the odds and I'm like, wow, you mean the Vikings are greater than 31 to 1? And they're going off at shorter odds than the Giants, who are 55 to 1. Why wouldn't I have money on both teams? Get these outrageous odds. Throw 10 bucks on each team. Why wouldn't I do that? knowing that one of these teams necessarily is going to make the next round of the playoffs. And if they do, and if they're playing one of the teams I think actually has a chance of winning the NFC, wouldn't that provide me cover? So if I'm looking at a game, and let's say Jalen Hurts comes back, you know the way football is. Jalen Hurts come back, oh, he gets hurt early. Right? You know, there's a fumble. Let's say the Eagles are dominating, but they keep turning the ball over. And suddenly the game is close. You're protected, somewhat. Because you have not just the Eagles, who you have heavy money on, but you have money on the other side. And you got it dirt cheap. Worse yet, you didn't even deserve to hedge. You only got the hedge because you sound you found a game where one team was going off <coughs> at better than 30 to 1. <coughs> and the other team was going off at better than 55 to 1. Right? There was no way you weren't going to have long odds on the winner. There was no way you weren't going to survive the game because you had both sides of it. Right, So give futures a hard look here, even if you have no futures action right now. right? Just understand the odds here. Right, I agree. There are some powerful teams out there. Make no mistake about that. Right, I think in the AFC, guess what? The Chiefs and the Bills, they are powerful teams. Right? They're powerful teams. But just understand, if you have enough of a hedge, then your bet's covered. Last year, the Bengals went into Kansas City and beat KC in the playoffs. It was a bit shocking, quite frankly. Right, But understand... You got decent odds on the Bengals, on futures. Who thought the Bengals were going to win the AFC last year? Right, so there's a group of you who looked at that game and then thought, I'll be doggone. (laughs) I wasn't expecting that to happen, but that's okay. I survived that game because I got such ridiculous odds on the Bengals that this upset still gives me a chance to win big money even though I didn't bet that much money on the Bengals. 
right? So you have some games here. That giant Minnesota game, folks, the shortest odds in the game, believe it or not, on futures to win the Super Bowl are Minnesota at plus 3150, right? That Jacksonville game, I know you show up to the sports book, you're like, hey, I want to watch a Jacksonville game. People are going to laugh at you. Why are you looking at them? Because you're getting better than 47 to 1 odds on that. Because their opponent, you're getting better than 23 to 1 odds on that. Isn't your goal here in futures to have the ability to hedge in the later rounds? And I got news for you. These odds are going to change by more than you think after the games. Whoever wins that giant Minnesota game is going to go off at much shorter odds. Think about this, too. Minnesota, right now, better than 31 to 1. If they beat the Giants, folks, their next game is going to be at home because they're the two seed in the NFC. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand, too, hedging futures doesn't just apply to football. It applies to every sport, right? Do you think casual gamblers expected the Phillies to win the National League last year? Folks, you had some people getting ridiculous odds, right? The minute you have a Goliath in the room, like the Dodgers were last year, statistically, right? You're getting crazy odds on the Phillies. Crazy odds. So by the time the Phillies make the World Series against some dominant team like the Astros, right, folks, you can give away some of the hedge to the favorite and make out okay. Be watching the game. You don't have to be Mattress Mac, watching the game, sweating. No, you can watch the game and relax and exhale because you have money on both sides and you are set up to make a profit simply because your timing was good. Understand why you can have money on both sides. It's because there are times where the market gets ahead of itself, where you look at the Vikings and you say, okay, look, I know they're doing it with smoke and mirrors. I know their points for and points against are close. I know the numbers don't make them look dominant. Right? This is a team that beat Buffalo and Buffalo. This is a team that has home field this week, home field next week, if they win this week. And you're getting greater than 30 to 1 odds. Worse yet, let's say you say, okay, well, why don't I play here? Hell, why stop there? Take the Giants. You're getting better than 55 to 1 odds. One of those two teams, necessarily, is going to make the next round of the playoffs. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Good luck.